All right, in this first video, we um, basically came up with the formula for the double integral in a polar region, and the formula was the double integral over the region of um, f of r theta, r, dr, d theta, and the r was the main difference there that you're going to have to remember. So let's go ahead and go through some examples. We want to evaluate the region over the domain. Uh, the region is xy squared dA. If d is in between the curves, x equals 0 and x equals the square root of 1 minus y squared. Um, so if you hopefully recognize this, normally we'd see one where it's y equals uh, the square root of 1 minus x squared, um, which would be a circle, or at least the top half of a circle. Well, if you square both sides of this and then add y squared, you still get a circle. But the fact that this one is solved for x means that this is actually going to be um, the right half of a circle because it's the positive side. So really, this thing looks like it's going to go from here to here, where this is negative 1 and that's positive 1. And again, it's only the right side because it's only got the positive. It would have to have plus and minus for it to be the whole circle. So we can do this in rectangular. We're not going to. We're going to do it in polar because it's just easier. All right, so a couple things we have to recall to be able to do polar. We have to remember that in polar, x is the same thing as r cosine theta, and y is the same as r sine theta. So let's see what's going on here. First thing we have to figure out is we have to figure out how r and theta vary in polar. Well, theta looks like it's going to go from here, because all the angles down here, and then all of the corresponding angles all the way up to here. So, excuse me, theta is going to go from, it looks like, negative pi halves all the way up to pi halves. So, negative pi halves, less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to pi halves. So, theta varies from negative pi halves up to pi halves, and then the radius simply goes from 0 out to 1 in every direction because it is a circle with a radius of 1. So r will vary from 0 to 1. All right, so let's go ahead and set up our double integral. So theta is going to go from negative pi halves to pi halves. The radius is going to go from 0 to 1. We've got our x and y squared, but we need to go ahead and put these into terms of polar. So we're going to have to replace x with r cosine theta. And we're going to have to replace y with r sine theta, which is really going to give us, if we square that whole thing, it's going to give us an r squared sine squared theta. And then don't forget, dA is r dr d theta. And there we've got our setup. So now it's just about going ahead and performing the actual integration. So let's see, I've got r and r squared and another r, so that's going to be an r to the fourth. And these can be separated. The r's and the thetas can be separated, so we can use Fabini's theorem on this thing, which is really nice. So I've got r to the fourth, cosine theta, sine squared theta, dr, d theta, 0 to 1, negative pi halves to pi halves. So this r to the fourth, which goes with your radius, is 0 to 1. The cosine theta and sine squared theta is going to go with the um, angle change, so it's out here. So it looks like I can split this up. Negative pi halves, pi halves of cosine theta, sine squared theta, d theta times integral from 0 to 1 of r to the fourth dr. And this piece over here is not going to be difficult at all to do. This one is going to require, it looks like, a little bit of a u substitution. And at this point, I'm going to assume that you guys understand how to do the u sub part. So u, in this case, is going to be sine theta. Because remember that when we take the derivative of sine, we want that to become cosine to get rid of this. So du is cosine theta d theta, making d theta 
du over cosine theta. So now we'll go ahead and substitute this stuff back in. So let's see, that's going to be cosine theta. Sine becomes u squared now because I let u be sine, so that becomes u squared. And d theta is du over cosine theta. And you should see that the cosines are going to cancel out. Now again, you have two choices. You can either um, integrate with respect to u and then go back to terms of theta and then plug these values in. Or we can change the bounds if we want to right now. Um, I prefer to go ahead and change the bounds at this point. So plugging negative pi, uh, pi halves in here, sine of negative pi halves is going to be uh, negative 1. And again, I am assuming that we know our trig values at this point. And then sine of pi halves is positive 1. So now I can go ahead and integrate this piece. That's going to be, what is that, 1 third u cubed from negative 1 to 1. And then I've got to do this side over here, which is going to be, what is that, 1 fifth r to the fifth oops, 1 fifth r to the fifth from 0 to 1. And then we'll multiply the results together. So let's see, plugging the 1 in here, we're going to get 1 third minus plugging in negative 1, you get negative 1 third. Over here, we're going to get, uh, let's see, it's plugging 1 in 1 fifth, plugging 0 in 0, so you're going to get 1 fifth. So this is going to be minus minus becomes plus, so that's going to be 2 thirds times 1 fifth. So what we get is an area, I'm sorry, a volume of 2 fifteenths. And that is the volume beneath that surface over the uh, the specified region, the domain on the xy uh, xy plane right there. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, two fifteenths. There we go. So the next one, we're actually not going to do any kind of integration. We are going to just look at the region. So what this wants us to do is, it says a region R is shown. Decide whether to use polar coordinates or rectangular coordinates, and then write the actual integral as an iterated integral from where f is an arbitrary continuous function on R. It just basically means we want to write out the integrals that we would use, but we're not going to go ahead and actually perform the integration here. Whoops. I don't want to send whatever that is right now. Thank you. Something about a bug splatting somewhere. Not fun. Okay, so what should be obvious is this. I mean, this is a circular region, right? So this should probably be done in polar. Something which is not circular, like this is parabolic. This one here is linear. These probably are not going to be done in polar. Those are going to be done in rectangular. I only got four of them. And then this one, which is two circular regions, looks like that would be done in polar as well. So at the very least, we should be able to say that this is polar, this is polar, this will probably be done in Cartesian or rectangular. This will be done in Cartesian or rectangular, whichever way you want to say it. But it does want us to go ahead and write out the integration that we would use for these things. So down here, number one, we know it's going to be a double integral. Let's see what our bounds are going to be. Well, we know that the region itself is going to be some kind of a function of r theta since we're doing this polar, and we know it's going to be an r dr d theta. So let's figure out the radius. Well, the radius looks like it goes from here out to here, so 0 to 4. So there's the bounds there. And then theta looks like theta goes from here all the way around to here. So it looks like it goes from 0 to 3 pi halves in terms of radians. So we'll go 0 to 3 pi halves. And there you have number 1. That's what it would look like. Now, obviously, we don't know what the function that's above this thing is, so we would not be able to write that. Number 2. 
Okay, number two is definitely something that looks like it's going to go in Cartesian. What should be obvious is that x varies from negative 1 to 1, and it looks like y is going to vary from 0 up to this function, 1 minus x squared. So we should be able to write the, um, the integral, the double integral. Okay, again, I know x is going from negative 1 to 1, which means that I'm going to have an f of x, y, and dx will be last, because that's the outside one. And then y, oops, come on, write something there. There we go. And then y is going to go again from, looks like, 0 up to the function 1 minus x squared. 0, 1 minus x squared. And that would be the way you'd perform number 2. These really aren't terribly difficult. Number three, we could do in a couple different ways, it looks like. We could go from here up to here, or we could go from this thing over to here. Um, looks like the easiest way is still probably going to do a type 1. So x will vary, it looks like, from negative 1 to 1, and then y is going to vary up to this um, up to this equation right here. This line um, looks like we might actually have to try and figure out what that line is, but we can do that. So x, again, is going to go from negative 1 to 1. y is going to go 0 up to that line. We'll fill that line in in a second of some function, f of x, y, dy, dx. Again, that's a type 1. So let's see. It looks like it's not labeled, but it looks like that's the point 1, 1. And this right here is definitely the point negative 1, 0 which means we could very easily find the slope and the y-intercept of this line. Um, so let's see, using point slope form just off to the side here. Um, slope between these two things, rise over run, up one, right two. So it looks like your slope is one half. So m equals one half on that one. So point slope form, y minus one equals one half x minus 1, multiplying the 1 half through, 1 half x minus a half, but then adding 1, you get plus a half. So that's the equation of this line right here. So it looks like y is going to vary from 0 to 1 half x plus 1 half. And then the fourth one, which definitely is going to be polar, the only difference here is that polar, the ra uh, radius here, is not going to go from 0 to 6. It looks like it's only going to go from here to here. So it's really going to vary from 3 to 6 for the radius. And remember, the radius is the inner one here at here. So, so the radius is going to go from 3 to 6 of some kind of a function of r theta, r dr d theta and it looks like we are talking about this right half a circle so it's going to go from negative pi halves up to pi halves all right and again we're not working all these out but that's just setting them up it is pretty important to be able to do the setup obviously because if without the setup we're not going to be able to go ahead and work these things out all right let's go on to the next one Evaluate the given integral by changing to polar coordinates of the double integral over x, y, um, dA, where d is the disk with the center, or I could probably should say center at the origin in radius 3. All right, so it's a disk, so it's a circular region. Center at the origin. Oh, that's horrible. Center at the origin. Radius 3. So r is definitely going to vary from 0 to 3. That much we should be able to tell. And it's an entire circle, so it's going to go from 0 to 2 pi. So really, this isn't going to be too difficult. So theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. The radius goes from 0 to 3. The only thing we have to do is change x and y into polar coordinates. Well, x is r cosine theta. y is r sine theta. And then don't forget that dA is r dr d theta. All right, and again, both of these two things have bounds, which are constants. 
R's and thetas can be separated, so we can use Fubini's theorem here. So the radius goes from 0 to 2 pi, and I've got cosine sine d theta. Cosine theta sine theta d theta times the integral from 0 to 3, the 1, 2, 3 r's there, so r cubed dr. This will be a piece of cake. Let's go ahead and work on this one. So again, it looks like we're going to have to do a little bit of a u sub. I'm going to not going to change colors here just because this will be pretty quick. Technically here you can use either one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use sine, but it really wouldn't matter. So if u is sine, du is cosine theta d theta, which means that d theta is du over cosine theta. So let's see. Let's go ahead and change the bounds. If I plug 0 in for sine, I still get 0. And then if I plug 2 pi in for sine, this is really awesome. I get 0. So really, none of this right here even matters. And none of this matters because if I take the integral from 0 to 0, whatever this is, d theta, it's going to equal 0, right? If you don't go anywhere, you're not integrating anything, you're not going to have any area. So you get, that looks like a d, doesn't it? You're going to get 0 out of this. So 0 times, you know, whatever we get here doesn't really matter. So we get 0. I mean, if you had worked this out, it would have been, what is that, 1 fourth r to the fourth. Um, so 81 fourths or something like that over here is what you would get. But then you'd multiply it by 0 and get 0. So awesome. Didn't even need to do any more on that one. That doesn't always happen, but it is nice when it does. All right. Number four. Let's see. We've got the double integral of uh, e to the negative x squared minus y squared dA, where d is the region bounded by the semicircle. Okay, we've seen one that looks just like this already. And it's also bounded by the y-axis. So um, that's the same as x equals 0. We've seen one almost exactly like this. Our domain, again, this is now the right half of a circle. The only difference between this one and the one we did before, I think, is that this now has a radius of 2. Because, again, if you were to solve this and squaring both sides, x squared equals all of this thing, and then add the y squared, you would get x squared plus y squared equals 4, so a radius of 2 on this thing. Um, the real trick comes in right here, that stuff right there. If I factor out the negative sign, what I really end up with here is e to the negative x squared plus y squared. Well, x squared plus y squared in polar coordinates is r squared. So that's something that we have to remember. So in this case, what we're going to get is e to the r squared, r dr d theta. Now all we have to do is write our bounds. So again, the uh, radius, which is the inner piece right here, is going to go from 0 out to 2. And then the theta it looks like it goes from negative pi halves up to pi halves. Excuse me. And again, it looks like these are separable. Okay, I've got all my R stuff here. Technically, all I have left over is a theta. There's actually no angle with it. So really, this is just going to be the integral from negative pi halves to pi halves of d theta. Technically, you could write a 1 in there because you always have a 1. So if you want to write the 1 in there and you need that, that's fine. And then, again, by Fubini's theorem, 0 to 2 of e to the R squared R dr. Alright, this piece over here is really simple. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. The antiderivative of 1, of course, is just theta from negative pi halves to pi halves. We can finish this one off. We plug in pi halves minus negative pi halves. That's like plus, so pi halves plus pi halves is 2 pi halves or just pi. So we'll get whatever this thing is and multiply it by pi. 
This one looks like it's going to require uh, another U substitution, so I will change the color on this one just to do it off to the side here. It looks like U is going to have to be R squared. It's the composited piece here, where if I take the derivative, the 2R is going to get rid of that thing. So DU equals 2R dr, solving for dr, du over 2r. Alright, so it looks like we're going to get an integral, and again, I'm going to go ahead and change the bounds. So plugging in 0 for r gives me 0, plugging in 2 for r is going to give me 4. That's why I don't have to go back into terms of r later. So that's now going to become e to the u times r times du over 2r. R's go away. It looks like I get 1 half integral from 0 to 4 e to the u du. Of course the antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u, so we get 1 half e to the u from 0 to 4, which is going to be 1 half of, looks like e to the fourth, minus e to the 0, but anything to the 0 is 1, so that's minus 1. And then don't forget to multiply it by that pi right there. So looks like in its simplified version here, it's going to be pi halves e to the 4th minus 1. And something's not right about that. Where did I make a mistake? You probably already caught it somewhere for me, but let's see. Ah, yeah, okay, right here. This should have been negative, which means that's negative, which means that this is negative r squared, which means that's negative 2r, negative 2r, Let's see if we can fix all these things here, or if I have to do a bunch of erasing. Um, that means this is actually going to go from 0 to negative 4. That means when I plug in, see that's going to be negative 4, negative 4 there, that's e to the negative 4 minus 1. Is that right? E to the negative 4. Let me check on that. Oop, still wrong because that negative is going to come out front right here with the negative. Oop, come on, draw something. There we go. Making that negative. So really, this is going to be a negative 1 half or negative pi halves. There we go. That's more accurate. Negative pi halves e to the negative 4. Let's erase that. doesn't really look like a 4. e to the negative 4 minus 1. And that should not be a times. Why is there a times in there? Let's just get rid of that. Minus 1. Yeah, that's correct. All right, there we go. All right. Um, let's jump ahead real quick. We're going to do one more. We're going to do exercise seven, and then um, not there. Yes, there we go. And then I'm going to call it quits on this one because we're already at 24 minutes. So. All right, evaluate the integrated integral again by converting to polar coordinates. So this is going to be really very similar to what we just did. So if we want to convert this to polar, again, the x squared plus y squared we know is going to be um, an r. So that much is pretty easy. We know the dy dx is going to become r dr d theta. Okay, that much we're going to be able to figure out. But we do have to figure out the bounds based upon this. So let's see what's going on here. y, because y is the inside when it varies from 0 to the square root of 1 minus x squared, and x goes from 0 to 1. So let's think about this. y is going to go from 0 to the square root of 1 minus x squared, so that means y is positive, and this is the top half of a circle. 
So we know y is going to go up here. It's a radius of 1. And x can only vary from 0 to 1. So x has to start here and only go out to here. So we're talking about this region right here. So I'll put that in green. Or, really, or blue, excuse me. We're only talking about basically the first quadrant right there. Which means that when I go to write this, remember R comes first on the inside. R is going to go from 0 to 1. E to the R. R, dr, d theta. And it looks like theta is only going to go from 0 up to pi halves. Okay, other than that, this is really going to be very similar to the one that we just did. So we should be able to do this pretty quickly, I think. Um, man, I did it again, didn't I? This is going to be r squared. That would not have been easy if that was just r. Um, yeah, x squared plus y squared is r squared. Okay, there we go. So, it is separable by Fubini's theorem, all constants. So the d theta part goes here times integral from 0 to 1 of e to the r squared r dr. And again, this is going to require a simple u substitution where u is r squared, du is 2r um, dr. And so dr is going to be 2r over du. So this one, again, is simple. That's just going to be theta from 0 to pi halves. This one is going to become changing the bounds. We're going to get, oh, 0 to 1 still. That's nice. Uh, e to the u, r times, wow. That's du over 2r. I'm trying to go too quickly. du over 2r. R's go away. 1 half comes to the front. So this is going to be pi halves minus 0, which is pi halves. This is going to be 1 half antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u from 0 to 1. So plugging in 1, let's see, we're going to get pi halves times plugging in 1, we're going to get a half of e plugging in 0. Remember, e to the 0 is 1, so we're going to get minus a half. Um, so the only thing that might be different if you look the answer up in like the book or something like that, they probably would factor the 1 half out. So the final answer would probably look something like this. And that would be it. Again, not terribly difficult as long as you're not going too quickly and not trying to make too many mistakes like these are over here. All right, we will come back with a third video and do some more examples.